What's up, folks? This is the Visual Smuggler, and today we are once again in Adobe Photoshop. We're going to focus on branding today, specifically one of the most important aspects outside of your band's actual music, your logo. Seriously. A good eye-catching logo can help draw the interest of prospective fans, and it makes you look that much more professional. So I'm going to be creating this. It's a logo for a fictional deathcore band called Warehouses, because, you know, that's where about 85% of dudes in bands work. That said, this logo will be something your band could use on a t-shirt, album art, stickers, just about anywhere. It's all about making your name and your theme catch someone's eye. After that, it comes down to your music. And I'm not about to make tutorials on how to write music. I just do graphics and hack cleaning videos. So let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing we want to do is go to File, New. We're just going to create a new document. I'm going to make it 12 by 12 at 300 PPI or DPI. Uh, that's standard for printing. So we're just going to create, and it popped in on another window. Here it is. So we have a black background and we are ready to create. And the first thing I want to do is create the background element. If you can see in this one, I want to create this uh, background stuff that's going on here. So we're going to start with the rings and to create a series of rings, it's actually pretty easy. We want to grab the ellipse tool. So if I go over here to this square and I come down to the ellipse tool, uh, ellipse is a fancy word for circle. Uh, in this case, we're going to make a ring. So to make a ring, we don't want a solid color circle. We want a ring. Uh, so I'm going to go up to these settings here. And for fill, I want to make sure that I have this white box with the red slash through it chosen. Now I'm going to come over to stroke. And I'm going to make sure that that is colored white. I'm going to start with a white ring. So there we go. And now what I'm going to do is come down into my project panel. And I want to figure out where the center of the screen is. Thankfully, this is 12 by 12. So I'm just going to come down to 6. And you'll notice that the guides actually snap when you use them. And to pull up guides, all you have to do is go into the rulers and click, pull to the side, and your guides will show up. And see, it snaps a little in the middle there. So we have the very middle of the screen. And if you want to figure out how to turn your rulers on, just go to View come down to rulers and make sure that that's checked. You can also do control or command R. So let's make a ring. I'm gonna go in the middle of the screen here. What I'm gonna do is click first, and then I'm gonna hold shift and alt, and I'm going to just pull in any direction. And you'll see that this ring expands from the very center, uh, completely uniform. So I'm gonna go to about an inch, or, or the one, I'm looking at the ruler over here. And we'll do it right about there. Let it go. And we've got a nice white ring, but it's a little too big. It's a little too thick. So I want to change the stroke size. And what's nice is after I've created this ring, now you can see all the settings show up over here in the properties panel. And right here is the size of my stroke. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to bring that down to about 10. Actually, maybe we'll just go to nine be happy with that. So we've got a nice thin white ring going on. All right, now the next thing I want to do is create a thick gray ring. So I'm going to again, click on my ellipse tool. And I'm going to choose a different color. I'm clicking on the settings up here. And we'll just go with like a darker gray. And again, middle of the screen, click shift and alt, and pull it out. And I don't want them to be completely touching. I want there to be kind of like a, a faux black ring between them. I'm going to go right about there. Let go. And we've got a nice thick gray ring. But I actually want that to be just a little thicker. So I'm actually going to bring that up to 65. And click Enter. And there we go. Nice thick gray ring going on. And we're going to do some stylizing and some cool things to, to these rings. But first, what I want to do is create another thin white ring. And instead of creating just a new ring and messing with a bunch of settings, I'm just going to duplicate the first layer. So the first layer is right here. I'll just go to duplicate layer. Click OK. I'm not worried about naming these layers because they're all going to go into a group. So I'll just leave them as they are. I'm going to come up to my move tool. And we can see that I have the transform controls turned on. This allows me to manipulate the layer. I'm just going to click on one of the corners 
and I'm going to hold Shift and Alt again so it resizes uniformly, and I'm just going to bring it down. And I'm kind of eyeballing it for the black ring just to make sure it's relatively the same as the outer black ring. Let it go there, hit Enter, or double click, and there we go. So we've got our thick gray ring with the two thin white rings. Looks pretty cool so far, so we're doing good. Now, one thing I want to do is add a little oomph to this gray ring. I want to put something in the middle, and I have something perfect that'll go along with the theme of this band. The theme is kind of mechanical or, or factory. So I've got this uh, circle chain that I'm going to put in there. Let me pull that up really quick. Okay, so I've brought in my PNG of this vector chain that I have. Uh, it's actually not a vector because we're not working in Illustrator, which is a whole different monster. We're working in Photoshop. So this is actually just a PNG that I created. But I'm just going to go over here to the layer and drop it right in. And you can see the chain is in there. Let's get rid of this guy. Thank you for your service. And we're going to go here again to the transform controls, uh, the little node in the corner. Again, shift and alt, click and drag. So it resizes uniformly. It wasn't exactly centered, which is fine. I can just kind of move it around. I've got this little crosshair there. It lets me know when it's in the center. I don't think that this chain was a perfect circle for you know whoever created it, but I can do my best to just kind of fit it. You know, I'm using the uh, arrow keys to make sure that it fits relatively well. Right there should be good. Click Enter, and it unpixelates so we can see it a little better, and I can just move it a little more to make sure that it's sitting where I want it to sit. Sweet. Now, the one thing is that it's a dark gray chain, and I actually want it to be black. So to do that really quick, I'm just going to crush the blacks. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and I'm going to take this node right here and just pull it all the way to the side. So it just makes everything black. It just it, it does what's called crushing the blacks. Click OK. So we're good there. Now, we've got this cool chain going on in the ring. We've got the ring set up. I have one more element I want to add to the background, and that's a gear. I want to put just like a big, fat gear right in the middle there. So I'm going to pull that up really quick. I have this gear here. Now, you can see that it's got white behind it, so I need to separate the gray from the white. And some of you might be thinking, oh, just grab the magic erase tool and just do some erasing. Yeah, we can do that. But you know, I want to save a couple seconds. So what I'm going to do is go to select color range and I'm just going to click in the gray. Click OK. Now you can see that it's created a marquee. I'm going to make sure that this is a layer and I'm going to come down here and hit the mask tool and it masks out all that white. So all that's left is the gray. A lot quicker than fuddling around with the magic eraser tool. So let's pull this layer in. And we want to get it nice and centered up. Now, what I can see one thing is that the centering node is kind of offset. So I want to change that. What I'm going to do is hold Alt and click on that. And I'm just going to drag it to the very center of the gear. That way I can make sure the gear is centered where it needs to go. Uh, so when I change the size, it'll fit properly. So again, Shift Alt, grab a corner and change it uniformly. So it fits. I want a little bit of space in there. I don't want it completely, you know, touching like this. Add a little bit of black space in there. Make it easier on the printer so they don't have to use so much ink. And there we go. We have our gear placed. It's a little far down. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys to kind of get it in place where I want it to be. Right there is good. Now, let's get rid of these guides. We don't really need them anymore. To get rid of the guides, I'm going to go to View, Clear Guides. And they're gone. So this looks pretty cool so far. It's a it's a neat little design we have going on. It almost looks like a like an Amazon kind of thing if you look at it from far away. But what I want to do is add some life to this. Now you know I've got these nice uniform circles and gears and a chain going on. But let's add a little bit of life. Let's grunge this up because we're talking about metal. We're talking about deathcore breakdowns, crazy stuff. You know we don't want it to be super duper clean. We want it to be grungy. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I want to make sure that my layers don't get out of order. So actually, I'm going to shift click all of these layers for this background element. And then I'm going to press control G and it puts everything into a group, a little folder here. And you can see if I drill down, all my elements are still there. And I'm going to name this folder. I'm going to call it BG element. And what I like to do is when I have groups, I keep them all in capitals just so I can find them quicker when I'm looking through layers and stuff like that. So that's my background element there. 
And now I can do all kinds of stuff to it. I can, you know, move it around and such, and everything moves together. So let's bring in some grunge. I'm going to get rid of this gear. Thank you so much. See you later. And I've got this really cool desert background that I used in a previous tutorial. You might remember this. Uh, you can find this on Shutterstock, and I will provide the link for it below if you want to go and grab that. And what I want to do is crop out this sky. I really don't want the sky. What I want is this desert floor layer here. Uh, that's the grunge I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do is just kind of crop out all that sky, even that portion there. I don't want really any of that. I just want this, this grungy ground here. And I'll double click, makes the crop. And then what I'll do is I'll double click here, just turn it into a layer. And then I'm going to bring it in and drop it in. Now I noticed one thing that I forgot to do. There's one part of the background element I forgot to do. So let me turn off this layer really quick. I like the circles, but I kind of want to constrain them. I kind of want to put them into something. Remember, we're talking like machines and mechanical. So I'm actually just going to create a box. I'm going to come back to my ellipse tool, but instead I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. Again, I just want it to be a stroke. I don't want it to be a solid color box. So I'm going to make sure that it's white. There we go. And I'm going to go to, again, the center of the screen, click, shift and alt and pull it out so it resizes uniformly and let it go. And we got a big box, but it's a little too thick. So I need to change the stroke just a little bit. And this is, you know, this is where being a designer comes in. You try different things, you try different parameters. I could write down all the numbers and make it seem really quick, but I kind of want you guys to see me, you know, try things because this is what you're going to do when you're designing. So I like that. The box is a little thinner and it constrains everything and gives us uh, m even more of a mechanical kind of feel. So let's get back to that grunge. I'm going to pull the rectangle actually into the background element group. So you can see it's in there. There's a the rectangle right there. Now let's go back to this grunge. Let's turn it on. Now I want to make sure that the grunge is completely covering the background element. So I'm going to go to my move tool. I'm going to choose the grunge layer, make sure it's highlighted. And I'm just going to kind of skew it any way I want, just so that it's covering. We don't. This doesn't really need to be uniform. We just need to make sure it's covering the image. So now you're probably thinking, okay, well, now there's a desert floor. Where's the image? Watch this. We're going to play with some blending modes. That's these things right here. And you can drop down. There are a whole bunch of different blending modes you can do. And it, it does really cool stuff to the images that are behind this image. So check this out. If I go down a few... You can see how it starts to kind of interact with what's behind it. And the one I'm going to choose is Darken. It creates this really cool screen kind of effect, but it looks like the grunge is on top of all this stuff we created. And there's just a few more things I have to do to it. We're definitely not done here. So one of the things I want to do is set this layer into grayscale. So with the layer selected, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Black and White. I'm not going to mess with any of the settings here. I just want it to be straight black and white. So I'm going to click OK. Now it's in black and white. We're back to gray. And it's a little too dark, especially down here. We're just getting a little too dark. So what I'm going to do is play with the opacity. I'm going to bring it down to about 85. You know, maybe 82. That works for me. Does it work for you? Works for me. So now we can see still more of that background element. We don't completely lose it with the blending mode, but we still get that good grunge in there and it looks really, really cool. So we're definitely not done because we still don't have a band name. We need to add our band name and then we're going to do even more to this background uh, to bring it all together. So bear with me. Let's sally forth. Yeah, I just said that. OK, anyway, text tool. So our band name is Warehouses. You know, some of these deathcore bands and gent bands and whatever, they like to do like the one word plural names like volumes or structures or warehouses. <laughs> so, you know, I figure why not? We'll go along with that theme. So I have my text here, but we definitely need to do some stuff to it. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit, place it just kind of where I think I, I want it to be. I don't want it completely in the middle. I want it to be just below. So we have some stuff kind of cascading over it. And I definitely need to stylize it up. So the first thing, text tool, I'm going to click control A just so I get 
all the text highlighted. I'm going to open up my character panel. And the font I'm using for this is All Star 4. If you've seen my other tutorials, you know that I'm a big fan of Bebas New. I use that for a lot of like information and stuff because it's a really good sans serif font. But for this, I want to use All Star 4. I just like the rigidity of this font. It fits for what I'm doing here for this band specifically. So I'm also going to change the color to white just so it stands out, just so we can see it. Plus that white is going to take a grunge layer a lot better than the gray will. And you'll see that as we move forward. So first thing I want to do is definitely get this sized so that it fits within the parameters. And uh, what I'm watching is the S here, but I can also see that the W goes off a little bit. We'll change things around. No worries. I'm going to bring in the text thickness just a little bit. And then I'll cheat and I'll actually use the transform control tools to just kind of get it exactly where I want it to be. Using the arrow keys to just kind of moving things around. There we go. Looks good, but I want to increase the size of the text to about 130. And you don't want to skew it too much. You don't want to make it look like crazy. You know, you got to be really careful with how you manipulate text. You don't want to go too too crazy you just want to do things to make it fit that's that's the general theory here i'm just doing things to make it fit and make it look good and this isn't a super fat text it's actually relatively thin so you know warehouses is a fairly big word and we're just trying to fit it all within the image so let's keep moving forward we've got warehouses placed now uh one thing i want to do is you might notice that there's a whole lot of gobbledygook underneath warehouses and it just kind of does the, the picture doesn't really come together because we've got all this mess going on down here. So what I'm going to do is use my gradient tool to create kind of a fade effect. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my background element and I'm going to right click and choose convert to smart object. That way it turns all of that into one layer. Now you might be thinking, but wait, what if I want to change something in the background? No worries, you just click on this little node there and there you go. There's the background element. We just don't see the black behind it, but these are all the elements that we created, the shapes and whatnot to make the element. I'm just gonna close that. And so now for the background element, I'm going to set a layer mask and you need to make sure that the mask portion is highlighted, not this portion, the mask portion. So the portion on the right side of the little paper clip. So let's grab our gradient tool, which is right here. And what I'm gonna do is set a gradient so that the foreground vanishes into the background. So check this out. I'll pick a random spot. I'm going to press shift, click, and just drag the little line up. And you can see how it just kind of fades out the bottom of the picture there. It doesn't delete it, it just fades it out a little bit. And what I want to do is make sure that the picture isn't visible behind the text. I really want to fade it up nicely. And it takes, you know, some trial and error, some trying things, some, some getting things right, just to make sure that it's where you want it to be. That's a little too much. There we go. That looks cool. So now it's kind of coming out of the, the word warehouses. Now the grunge gets a little lost in there. So what I can do is with my grunge layer, I can just kind of play with it a little bit, bring it up, bring it down. Um, you know, we might lose the image just a little bit. You can play with the opacity to make sure that you can still see the image in the background. You know, we want our grunge to affect it, but we, we also don't want to lose our background image too much, too, too much. So I'm just going to set it right about there. And I think I'm going to bring it up to 70. Live designing. Live and in your face. Here we go. I'm stoked on it. Um, anyway, so let's do some stuff to warehouses. We could leave it white. I mean, it stands out. What I like to do sometimes when I'm designing is kind of watch the smaller navigator window because it gives me an idea of what it looks like from far away. Now, yeah, we can see warehouses bright and clear, but it just kind of looks boring and plain, you know, just white text with this cool stylized background. So let's stylize the text. Let's do some things to it. One thing I want to do, 
I really want to grunge it up. I want to use that grunge layer. So I'm going to go to my layer three. In fact, let's just change the name of it to grunge. And I'm going to duplicate the layer. Grunge copy. I'll bring it up above warehouses. So right now the blending mode is affecting warehouses, but the blending mode is also, since it's a new layer, it's affecting everything else underneath it. And we only want it to affect warehouses. So to do that, if you want a certain layer to affect just the layer underneath it, like an adjustment layer, or in this case, a blending mode layer, here's what you can do. Right click on that layer and go to create clipping mask. Now, you see how things changed a little bit? Now this grunge layer, see this little arrow here? It means it's affecting only the layer beneath it, just the one layer beneath it, not any of this. So if I come over here and move it around, you see how it's just affecting the warehouses layer? And now I can really put the grunge where I want it to go on warehouses. In fact, I can even scale it down a little bit and just kind of get that grunge in a good spot. There we go. I dig that. I like that a lot. So one thing I want to do maybe is bring up the opacity a little bit just to darken it. Go about 82 so we can still see warehouses. It looks good. We've got a tiny little bit of a vignette almost going on there. Looks really cool. So one last thing I want to do to the word warehouses. We could leave it like this. It almost looks like it's got a drop shadow. You know that degree of separation I say all the time. But I would really like to fade the bottom of the text here just to make it all just to add to that little grunge element, just to just to give it that little more push. So what I'm going to do is go to warehouses and I'll create a layer mask. Now, don't worry, the text is still editable. So no matter what I do to it right now, I can still edit the text. I didn't have to rasterize it or anything. But remember, we want to make sure that the right side square is highlighted. I'm going to come back over to my gradient tool and I'm going to just pick a random spot, hold shift, drag it up just a little bit. And there we go. I'm going to play with it just a little bit to get it. Oh, right there. I like that. Exactly what I want it to look like. So check this out. It just fades a little bit. The words fade a little bit, but we can still see it if we kind of make it smaller so we can get a get an idea of what it looks like from far away. But this is what your logo could look like. We could even, you know, if you want, let's click on both of these layers so that they move together. And I'll just, with the arrow keys, I'm just going to move the word warehouses up just a little bit. So we get a little bit of that image. Looks like it's kind of going behind warehouses and it fits nicely. Look at that. This is a really cool logo and we are done. We can send this off to a printer for t-shirts. Uh, we can send it in for stickers. We can use it as album art. It's just, you know, using grunge layers and shape layers and things like this. There's not a ton that you have to do. It's just how you put it together. Now, one thing that's cool about this logo is I can actually backpedal a little bit and show you some other cool things that we can do with it. So we've got this nice version with the text like this, and maybe I'll save it to a PNG so I don't lose it, or I'll save this PSD file and then manipulate it. It's always good to save, 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 save. But anyway, check this out. I'm going to step back quite a bit, so follow along with me as I do this. Okay, so I've stepped back quite a bit, and what I want to do is actually use the entirety of the background element. So I'm going to turn warehouses off for a second, and I want to do the grunge layer all the way around. It kind of gets clean up toward the top. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the layer. And remember, we named it grunge, just so we know what our layers are and what they're doing. It helps. Grunge 2. Okay, so let's take grunge layer 2. And I'm going to go over here to the node. And you see how my cursor changes? That means that I can rotate it. So now if I click and hold shift, it'll kind of uniformly snap to the rotation, which is nice. And uh, it makes the image a little dark in the background there. So I'm just going to move things up just to get that little bit of a lighter portion. Maybe I can even change the opacity a little bit to brighten it up. We don't want to lose that grunge. There we go. So I like that. This grunge, maybe we'll bring it up to 75. 
just to brighten it up a little bit. Now we've got grunge all the way around. And it's really just those two grunge layers in the background. See if I turn them off, turn them back on. So let's go back to warehouses. And instead of having warehouses kind of underneath the image with the image cascading out of it, I'm going to put it right smack dab in the middle. So let's take it and put it in the middle. You can see that I have guides turned on that help me kind of assess where things are going and it snaps really nicely. It's, it's definitely helpful. So we've got warehouses. Now we need uh, a grunge layer on warehouses. So what I want to do is take this original grunge layer, I'm going to duplicate it again, and I'm going to call it text grunge just so I know which grunge is which. I'm going to put it up above warehouses again. So I'm going to right click and choose create clipping mask. Now it's only affecting warehouses underneath it. And we can bring up the opacity just a little bit. Just a bit. I don't want to go crazy with it. I still want to be able to see the text. Let's just go to 80. Let's call it 80, a nice round number. There we go. So this looks cool, but warehouses gets kind of lost in there. So here's one way that we can actually separate it from the background. I'm just going to go to effects. I'm going to choose stroke. And I'm going to create a nice thick stroke. So you don't want anything too thin. I actually want it to be relatively thick. In fact, I might just go to 50. Okay, 50 is a little too thick. So let's scale it down to about 35. There we go. So what it does is it creates kind of a cutout. Click OK. It creates a cutout for the text. So we can see the text nicely and it still stands out from the background. Now what you can also do, I'm a big fan of drop shadows. Uh, you could go back to the effects for warehouse and if you wanted to throw on a drop shadow and play around with that, it might not look as cool. It might look even cooler. Um, this is more of like an album art thing maybe that I would do. But you can see how the how the drop shadow has affected it. That looks more like a, a movie sort of thing that you would see on like a movie poster. So instead, I'm going to stick with the stroke just to make that nice cutout. It just cuts it right out of the background. And if I scale it down again from far away, we can see how it looks. Looks really, really cool. Now, here's another cool thing you can do with this kind of a logo. Sure, you've got the grunge and it looks neat and it looks awesome, but let's say you just want a variation. You want a variation that looks completely clean because a lot of bands like to do these clean, kind of full of shapes kind of logos. Well, check this out. Let's just turn all the grunge off. And look at that. You've got this cool, clean, stands out on a t shirt sort of look, and it still maintains that theme that you were going for, it just kind of eliminates the grunge. And all I'm doing is turning off the grunge layers. You know, you could even get a little crazy if you wanted to. Let's open up that gear again that I had. Uh, again, I want to cut the gear out of the background. Select color range, gray, marquee, make sure it's a layer, mask, boom. So another thing I want to do is uh, I want to crush the whites on it. So I'm actually just going to go to Effect, Color Overlay, make it white, click OK, pull it in. It's kind of big. So here's here's something cool that we can do to kind of bring this image together. Just going to go to one of the nodes up here again, Shift and Alt, and scale it down just a bit. And I'm going to put it here in the corner. Line it up kind of in the corner right there. I'm going to turn off my transform controls just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, it's set. And now I want to put gears in all four corners. So what I'm going to do is hold Alt. And if I click on the gear and pull, see it creates a copy. And look at these guides. These guides tell me where it's going and how it's going to fit. So I can make sure that they all fit uniformly. Again, Alt, click, pull it down. We can see the guides are telling me everything is looking good. And again, Alt click, make sure it's centered, and boom, everything lines up. So now we've got these cool little gears, and let me close all these. But we've got these cool little gears in the corners, and it kind of brings the image together. It almost creates a vanishing point from far away. If you're if you're familiar with photography, you know, your eyes might get caught on the gears, but then they kind of direct you like an X almost into the center where, of course, you're going to see the word warehouses. 
And if we wanted to add those to our grunge stuff, we could always bring them down below all the grunge layers, turn those on, and there you go. So you've got the little gears in the corner too. Uh, guys, this is it. This is what I wanted to create. I hope that you're able to take some of these ideas and make your band a really cool looking logo. It will help with your marketability. It'll help you look more professional. And I wish you all the best of luck.